In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. I welcome you to this celebration of the Eucharist, the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time, but also very special because today we're celebrating our first Sunday Mass in our FRG Ministry Chapel. It's still a work in progress, still a lot for us to do here, but we have the privilege of now serving you, broadcasting live to you from a chapel where we don't need to rush in between Masses, where we don't need to get a whole crew in and out out every time we celebrate this Mass. We have the freedom to pace ourselves, to love and to serve the Lord and celebrate this Mass with you, all from people, with people from all around the world. We are so blessed and grateful to those who have supported this chapel and uh, allowed us to establish this here. This is not the first Mass celebrated here. This Mass, this chapel has already been consecrated to the Lord, dedicated to God, but now now we get to celebrate this Holy Mass with you. What a blessing, what a privilege. So as we begin this time of worship, let's ask the Lord to fill our hearts. Some of us are tired, we're weary, we're lost. Others are full of joy and woke up fresh and it's wonderful. But we have a lot to be grateful for, a lot to thank God for in our lives. So as we begin this time of worship, let us ask God for strength and peace. Lord, you give us life in abundance. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you ask us to choose you above all things. Christ, have mercy. And we know that in you the best is yet to come. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is the reading from the Book of Wisdom. That night had been foretold to our ancestors, so that once they saw what kind of oaths they had put their trust in, they would joyfully take courage. This was the expectation of your people, the saving of the virtuous and ruin of their enemies, for by the same act with which you took vengeance on our foes, you made us glorious by calling us to you. The devout children of worthy men offered sacrifice in secret and this divine pact they struck with one accord, that the saints would share the same blessings and dangers alike, and for which they had begun to chant the hymns of the fathers. The Lord of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Bring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. They are happy whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own. Response? Happy, happy the, the people, people the Lord has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Response? Happy, happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. 
The Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Response. Happy, Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. The second reading is a reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 to 2, verses 8 to 19. Only faith can guarantee the blessings that we hope for or prove the existence of the realities that at present remain unseen. It was for faith that our ancestors were commended. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed the call to set out for a country that was the inheritance given to him and his descendants, and that he set out without knowing where he was going. By faith he arrived, as a foreigner, in the promised land, and lived there as if in a strange country, with Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. They, they lived there in tents while he looked forward to a city founded, designed, and built by God. It was equally by faith that Sarah, in spite of being past the age, was made able to conceive, because she believed that he who had made the promise would be faithful to it. Because of this, there came one man, and one who was already as good as dead himself, more descendants than one than could be counted, as many as the stars of heaven or the grains of sand on the seashore. All these died in faith before receiving any of the things that had been promised, but they saw them in the far distance and welcomed them, recognizing that they were only strangers and nomads on earth. People who use such terms about themselves make it quite plain that they were in search of their real homeland. They can hardly have meant the country they came from since they had the opportunity to go back to it, but in fact they were longing for a better homeland, their heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, since he has founded the Savior for them. It was by faith that Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He offered to sacrifice his own son, even though the promises had been made to him, and he had been told, it is through Isaac that your name will be carried on. He was confident that God had the power to raise the dead, and so, figuratively speaking, he was given back Isaac from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Be watchful and ready. You know not when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, See that you are dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like the people waiting for their master to return for, for the wedding feast, ready to open the door as soon as he comes to knock. Happy those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. I tell you solemnly, he will put on an apron, sit them down at a table and wait on, on them. It may be the second watch he comes or the third, but happy the servants if he finds them ready. You may be quite sure of this, that if the householder had known at what hour the burglar would come, he would not have let anyone break through the walls of this house. You too must stand ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm always fascinated by those pictures of saints that you find them like Saint Jerome sitting at their desk with their pen. But if you notice, if you look closely on a lot of these saints' desks, whenever there's a desk, there's often a human skull. Now this is crazy. Why would these saints, why would the church depict these saints with a human skull on their desk? Actually, when I was in the seminary, there were a few seminarians who used to also have skulls on their desks, and I even know of priests who have skulls in their houses. Maybe not real skulls, maybe they're made of plastic, but even the image itself is a bit gruesome. It's a bit crazy, in a sense, to have at home. But why do they have this? Why do we depict, depict saints with skulls? It's simply because it reminds us, reminds them of their finiteness. That we are going to one day, whether you try to eat a good diet, have a healthy lifestyle or not, we're all going to die. And we're all going to, in a sense, be without flesh. We're all going to die and we're all going to have just our skulls left. 
And when we think about this, it may upset us, it may make us feel sad, it may say, you may even may be thinking, Father, why are you upsetting my children? My children are watching Mass here with me. But the reality is that we need to think and we need to contemplate about our finiteness, about our death, because we're not going to live in this life forever. And if we think and we contemplate, or like looking at this skull, we'll look and we think that we one day too will finish in this earth, and we're able to think about this without fear, then we're on the right path to living for the kingdom of eternity, the kingdom of God. This was the way these saints and these seminarians and these priests prepare themselves for eternal life. Because you, you cannot rise to eternal life until you die. A grain of wheat needs to die. A seed needs to die in order to sprout. And in this life, we are only seeds with a small potential, a small part of what God has created us to be. We were created for eternal joy. We were created to be with God forever in heaven. But we don't go to heaven by accident. We need to be prepared. And we do this by reflecting on whether we're holding on to things of this earth too tightly. We need to let go and trust in the Lord, let go of our addictions, let go of our sin, let go of the attachments of the wealth of this earth. So many people come up to me the, over the last few years. Father Rob, I want to be rich. I want to be rich so that I'll have enough money to give to the poor. I want to be rich so that I'll be comfortable. Even over social media, there's so much desire for people to be rich and wealthy. But not so much focus on building up our wealth in heaven. You see, at the end of the day, having building wealth, being successful, it's not going to give us anything once we die. Let's look and behold at our finiteness, at this skull, and realize that we were created to live this life to the full here, but not so much that we get attached to these places. Let's contemplate on how we will one day be with God in heaven and let go and look at it, not with fear, but with joy, because when we do get to heaven, when we do die, we will reach our full potential of joy, of peace, of hope, being with the one we love. But we need to be prepared. We need to contemplate. We need to think and not be afraid. Let us now proclaim our faith in a God who is so generous with us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us pray for the gift of generosity. Let's pray that we will hold on to nothing, have nothing, but only <laughs> have hearts that are so poured out for others. Lord, hear us. We pray for the church, that our church may be extravagantly generous in the way she loves and serves and gives and reaches out to the poor, the broken, the lonely, and the sinners. Lord, hear us. We pray for our governments, that our borders may be open to those in need who need refuge, who need peace, who need stability, who need dignity. Lord, hear us. So in, the mom in this moment, in the silence of our own hearts or with our families, let us bring our prayers to the Lord.
And Lord, we ask you to receive these prayers through inter the intercession of our Mama. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. creation for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you the fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink So pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, that in your mercy to, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, and by whose obedience we have been restored to the gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall. 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Shane, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your body, mind, and soul that God will give you strength and peace. So if you're comfortable doing that, just bow your head and allow me at this moment to pray for you. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your love and for the way you've called your people to peace and hope. Lord, I'd like to pray for those who are struggling right now with finding rest and peace. Lord, I thank you that you're healing someone from sleeplessness. Lord, you are our healer and you alone, you alone can heal your people. Give them rest. Help them find strength throughout the day as well, Lord. Give them peace for, and so they can sleep such a beautiful night's sleep. Lord, I thank you that you're healing someone from a chronic cough. You've been praying, you've been, had this cough for ages and ages, and the Lord, even at this moment now, is healing you from this. You are a God of miracles, my Lord, and we trust in you. Lord, there's someone with shoulder pain as well. Lord, thank you that you're healing someone of that. Lord, I'd like to pray for those who are finding it difficult to conceive, have been praying and hoping and haven't been able to conceive. Lord, give them this gift of life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love. Thank you for your peace. Heal your people. Embrace your people. Strengthen them and give them joy. Let us today pray an act of spiritual communion in the silence of our hearts. You can read it here on the screen. Amen. 
Amen. On behalf of FRG Ministry, thank you for praying with us. I want you to know that every Mass, every Sunday Mass, we pray for you, for your intentions. We get flooded with intentions, people asking us to pray for them. And I just want you to know that we pray for you. Myself, all our FRG Ministry team, we pray for you. And we, you, every day we pray, even as we gather, as we work. We're grateful for you, for your support, also your prayers for us. And we ask that you continue, please pray for us. We need your prayer. We are on outreach constantly, myself, Alyssa, and many others. We're at schools, we're preaching, we're teaching throughout the week. We're talking to thousands, tens of thousands of people every week. And we can only do this with your prayer and because of your support, plus our online ministry and everything else we do. But we also need your support in resources. So if you're able, you have been blessed by this ministry and you're able to support this ministry and even the continuation of the establishment of this chapel, please go to frgministry.com forward slash donate. And over there, you're able to support the ministry in any way you can. But also, we need ongoing support. So if you're able to support us on an ongoing way, we, can, we are able to plan ahead. For example, get new staff or invest in, in resources that allow us to, to have a guaranteed um, income so that we can pay for the expenses. If you're able to do this, go to frgministry.com forward slash ministry partner. As a ministry partner, you become part also of our ongoing ministry as a part of our ministry partner family. Also, check out our online courses, our podcasts. We have so much and we are, a couple of weeks ago finished our online summit. But it's still available. You can listen to all the talks and all the workshops and all the interactions right uh, on catholicinfluencersummit.org. Uh, there's a premium pass there that you can get um, to access all of this, plus all of our online courses for four months. A blessing that we, uh, um, we receive a blessing and also you are truly blessed as you grow in your faith. Let us pray. A company with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.
So I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. by FRG Ministry presents our online subscription package. As a member, you will receive digital on-demand access to Encounter's growing library of online courses. Encounter and Encounter Youth online courses cover teaching, devotional and practical elements of the Catholic faith to help individuals, teachers, students and parishes across the world grow in their faith and understanding of the Catholic Church and their relationship with Jesus Christ. Current titles include Knowing Mary, School of Prayer, Introduction to the Bible, the Mass, and more, with new courses being added regularly. All Encounter courses include high-definition videos with expert and engaging speakers, testimonies from everyday Catholics, and downloadable content including interactive PDF guides, prayer cards, and wallpapers. These courses are also accredited for professional development for Catholic education staff in Australia. All Encounter Youth courses include teaching videos, interactive student and teacher PDFs with lesson plans and guided prayer and reflection. For more information about enrolment and subscription options, head to www.encountercourses.com slash subscription. Be sure to follow us on social media on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Encounter Courses. Encounter Youth by FRG Ministry presents the Kingdom of God. Join Father Obgalia, Brendan Alliston and Clara Ravdanovich in this curriculum-based online course that explores what the Kingdom of God is and how we are called to bring about this Kingdom today by following the example of Jesus. Filled with an engaging visual narrative, high definition teaching videos and interactive teacher and student PDFs complete with lesson plans, class activities and more. This course is an invaluable addition to your classroom or youth group. Get access to this course and our entire Encounter Courses library at encountercourses.com forward slash subscription.